the day came of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we, meet, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where would you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where we may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper, he laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. not only as our church family and with other churches here in the Western world, but all over the world. We all get to come to the table because of Christ's sacrifice. When we come to the table, we don't come because of what we've done, but because of what Christ has done. And we get to celebrate that whether we're children learning about communion, whether we're from a different church possibly, Adventure of Faith isn't your home. You're all welcome here if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to ask that uh, when we come up, we're going to do communion a little bit differently. And so when you come up, we'll start in the front rows and work our ways back, um, heading in towards the center and then going, coming up, receiving the cup and the bread. And we'll have you actually take it up front and then leave your cup in the baskets provided and then return to your seats. Um, this way, we can make sure that everyone gets through, and when everyone's sat down, I'll explain, kind of give an introduction of how the rest of the evening is going to go. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Feed on them in your hearts by faith. Please stand and come. i 
Please join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for tonight, for an opportunity to, to worship you, to, to concentrate on that Friday night. Tonight we get to experience it, that we get to see it through what we feel the, the disciples' eyes might have been, through a different, many different characters throughout. 
I pray that it would make this, this night real for us, that we might focus on it just for this evening, that we might recognize what you did on this night. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much to die for us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So now that we've participated with one another in the taking of communion during the Last Supper, we now invite you to continue the story of that fateful night. And after observing Passover with his disciples, Jesus retreated to a garden to be alone with the Father and to pray. He brought along with him some disciples. And a lot of things that night went differently than they expected. Now, Gethsemane was a place they'd gone to lots of times before. They were familiar with it. But tonight was somehow different. And tonight we get to hear from the disciples as they reflect on the events of that night, that strange, confusing, scandalous, yet wonderful, beautiful night. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed. a different kind of Passover meal, to say the least. I remember as soon as I sat down, Philip, he leans over and he whispers, Hey, Thomas, I think something special is going to happen tonight. And I just looked at him and said, I doubt it. But boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Jesus got up from the table. He walked over and he grabbed a, a basin of water and a towel. I remember thinking to myself, hey, Samuel, what's Jesus going to do with some soap water? I doubt he's going to wash anybody's feet. <laughs> Again, I was wrong. Jesus knelt down and started to wash Bartholomew's feet. Bart just sat there, frozen. He didn't say a word. He didn't even move. None of us did. I remember thinking at the time, as soon as Jesus got me, what was going to happen to all of us? When Jesus was finished, he went on to James and to Andrew and the rest of us. I remember at the time thinking, this is so strange <laughs> and yet so wonderful.
When Jesus said that we would all lose our faith in him, I couldn't just sit there. I had to say something. So I looked at him and I said, Jesus, I love you. You can count on me. Everyone else may fall away, but I never will. He looked at me. He said, Peter, you will deny me three times before tomorrow morning. got to the garden, we got crazy. Jesus asked Peter, James, and I to go a little further into the garden so we can pray. And we did. Well, we tried. We kept falling asleep. Jesus kept waking us up. Remember one time he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's true. What happened next is just a blur. All started with that traitor Judas. He walked up to Jesus and kissed him. He betrayed Jesus with a kiss a friend. Then I got crazy. Peter grabs his sword, cuts this guy's ear off, and Jesus. Touched the guy's head. He healed him. As if nothing had happened. And then they took him. I would love to tell you that we fought for him. But we didn't. Everyone ran.
done? What have I done? Judas, you, you stupid. And, and for what, 30 pieces of silver? I betrayed my Lord for 30 pieces of silver. And he knew. He, he knew what I was going to do, and he didn't stop me. Was, was this my fate all along? To, to be the one that betrays Jesus? What, what, what did I do to deserve this? I, I was just trying to get him to take some action. It, it was time. It was time for us to rise up against our oppressors. And he was the one. He was the one that was going to lead us. But now, it's, it's all lost. And, and I... I, I've killed him. I, I have killed him. I have crucified Jesus. Personally, I don't think that man did anything to deserve that. But I was just a soldier, just doing my job.
when they took Jesus away, I tried to follow them at first. But then, just like Jesus said, I denied him three times that night. Shamefully, we all ran away like cowards. <coughs> Judas tried to return the silver that he had paid for his betrayal. He was so filled with guilt and loathing that he went out and hung himself. He just doesn't know what to do now. Jesus was our leader. Our Lord. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted, and they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that they called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them ran, at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on the reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. And the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Thank you.